uh, Julius Malema uh-huh. brought to the fray an act yeah, like is it 1960 something <laughs> you know it dilanang le trespassing particularly oh, yeah, yeah. i remember that yeah yes. particularly how it deals with black people yeah it's been in law since then it's never changed nobody has changed it it's never been contested ever maybe maybe we haven't had a case related to it in a long long time which is also possible which is also possible but from my time when i still worked in legal aid we have because for, for she the... assisted she's an accomplice ah right and we still don't know where this gentleman or Bloemfontein was killed exactly yeah and if he was killed at all if he was killed at all yes. so that is if that person was indeed killed by somebody somebody they, in this in this little thing. yeah yeah because then even if she wasn't present when the killing was done the body was utilized too yeah you know yes. so and com- if she was involved in that it's she's part of the she's murder. part of the murder King King David Studio podcast. All right, who knows? Today we might talk about Tava Besta because I have a, a lawyer in our midst. Uh, she's a regular here, not as regular as as I would like to, because hey, when I scheduled you, busy, <laughs> you know. So yeah. we, we managed to get a hold of uh, Tavi sent to Bazana once again. Uh, I was shocked by I saw a YouTube video. How you doing, man? I'm hey, good. Hey. I'm good. How are you? It's been a while. It has. Yeah. Do you know I was watching a, a YouTube video. Of these two white guys. Almost celebrating mm. uh, uh, the changes in 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 the in the rules. I'll call them that. Yeah. Yeah. B E E. Mm. You could tell it's like yo yo yo. And and I remember one of them said, "Well, maybe Ramaphosa is not so bad after all." <laughs> Do you know when you when yep. you look at that, you say, "Oh oh, what's going on?" Hey. And I started reading up a little bit on it, and I said, "Maybe I don't understand. Maybe I don't understand how." a black government can turn against its people mm. when it comes to empowerment. Mm. It, it, affirmative action and, and, and black economic empowerment, these are things that, in my opinion, we should live with for the next hundred years. I agree. And that's why I said, let me call you. Mm. <laughs> Maybe you can break it down for us. There's a, there's a, there's a new, what, what do we call it? A new the bi- Employment Equity Act. Act. Yes. So it's no longer a bill. It's, it's now an act. act. Yes. Yes. We abide. Yeah. Get red robot, green robot. Orange. Yeah. You abide. You yeah. abide. Yeah. If you don't, you get punished yeah. in whatever punitive measures that exist Correct. in that regard. Correct. Okay. What is the big deal with the new BEE Act? So, employment equity before. I like that you call it employment equity. Yes. It's not a BEE Act. No. It's Employment Equity Act. Why is that? Because in the past, it used to be that um, our people, black people, to be specific, mm. they were not hired mm-hmm. at all in the business sector. If they were hired, they were either cleaners, they were either garden boys, ir- irrespective of whatever kind of education yeah. they may have. Mm. And then when uh, democracy came around, those who were educated were now being slotted in into work, yeah. but not in such great uh, numbers. I- numbers and, yeah. and situations. Okay. The work environment was extremely horrible and extremely toxic. That's how we call mm-hmm. it these days. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was a, a volatile mm. situation. So the the courts, in fact, the government is like, okay, we need to make sure that there's employment equity okay. so that we deal with the discrimination yeah. that happens. Discrimination from race, discrimination on sex, discrimination on all sorts of fronts, True. right? They actually have actually brought my book. <laughs> mm. The the Employment Equity Act it's is a thick, it's a thick, thick book. Yeah. In a very big book, but it's in its own chapter, it's Ooh. quite thick. Okay. All right? And... The essence of that is to ensure that the workplace is harmonious. Yes. That yes. is the essence of the employment yeah. equity. So that Haiki Hirue Libra David mm-hmm. and we are hired to do the same thing, yeah. we are given the same pay. The only thing that should be different would be maybe years of experience, which would then, you know, mm. and it's irrespective of color, irrespective of, of sex yeah. and all of those things. And then there was issues with women. Uh, you know, being pregnant, as soon as a woman would declare that they are pregnant, they would lose their job, mm-hmm. you know? So mm-hmm. those things had to come into play to deal with all of that. Okay. And, you know, it's 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 just it's basically, a long, yeah, it's a long it's, list, it's, yeah. yeah, of what equity is. But, but, but 
I said BEE, mm. you said employment equity. Yes. Why why are we holding on as media, me and headlines to it as a BEE act? I actually don't know why it's it's, it's a BEE act. Um I really know because black yeah. economic empowerment is wherein we deal with uh, companies, mm-hmm. right, that are in need of work mm-hmm. and who have a greater majority of the previously disadvantaged persons. Uh-huh. Or ownership. Or ownership. Or in employment. Yes. Th- that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then opportunities are then made, especially to government, to give work to those people who were previously disadvantaged. Yeah. That is the purpose of BEE to help those kinds of businesses to, in order to, you know, help them grow and also to create employment because it wasn't easy, still isn't actually, Mm, mm. for black owned businesses to actually get any kind of um, income Mm. from just opening their doors. True. You know, even when you approach the government sectors, which is very sad, um, not just applying for tenders, but applying for funding, applying for all of these things, Mm. saying here is my solid business plan. Here's my idea. In actual fact, a business plan, it is not, for me, I'm not saying, the law says it's necessary. Mm. For me, it is not something that needs to be in a in a document, yeah, yeah, because most of us don't know what is required in a business That's plan. True. Your business plan, I like guess the the main definition of business plan is showing what your idea is. Mm-hmm. How is it you ex- you expect to execute it yeah. and what the potential outcome of that execution is? That is literally what a business plan is. Yeah, yeah. You come there with it, we want the fats in that way. It ought to be enough. Yes. But now you have to go pay somebody to go draft you a business plan and you still don't have money to pay that person in any event. Yeah. There are too many stumbling blocks for our yeah, people yeah. to make their businesses grow. So a BE is designed to help with such challenges yes. in some form. In some form. Yeah. But because of where we are in the country that we live in, there's still stumbling blocks in any event. That's true. You know? So are we are we now talking of changes in the and I'll use very simple language for my own understanding. Mm. Are we talking of changes in the BEE Act? No. No. Not at all. Is there an act called the BEE Act? This broad based economic empowerment act of fifty of 2003 so yes there yeah. is the BEE Act but the one that you are referring to that has been making headlines is the Employment Equity Act so there are two different acts so right now what are we talking about because we are up in arms Hore, hey, hey, bare, hey, no much I realize you have 50 people plus mm. what does that change so that change Eri, Okay, let's... But is, let's, is it a BEE change? And you're saying, no, it's not a BEE change. No, it has absolutely nothing to do with BEE. Yeah. But in a manner of speaking, it's it going to impact... It. Yes, it's yeah. going to affect it. Okay. And particularly based on our very delicate history that we've come from. And mind you, not that very old in our democracy. No, so a lot of things are still there. Mm. And they're still our, relatively new. You know? Yeah. So now we're in a situation, Yahore. We were trying to make the workplace as equitable for everyone who works in it as possible. Uh-huh. So now the new um, amendments, uh-huh. it's actually amendments to the Employment Equity Act are saying that if Mashabela or King David Studios uh-huh. hires 50 and above people, yeah. they now have to follow a certain criteria. Mm. They have to ensure that they're going to give to the Labor Department what their plans are in order to show that they're dealing or they're, they're complying with employment equity. So how many uh, people of, of all races you're going to be hiring um, show what it is that you're going to do to actively make sure that happens. And then there's going to be a person coming from the Labor Department who's going to come and physically be at the premises to see, Jorge, what you've put in your proposal you're actually doing Mm -hmm. and all of those things. And then that certificate you're going to get is is a yearly one. So you have to every year keep showing that your company is complying with these requirements. Are there requirements deliberately saying you should hire more Blacks? It's not saying more blacks, but it's just saying make sure that your business is balanced. It can't be predominantly white. Okay. 
Okay. Yes. Uh, and what is what is balanced in that context? And I asked this question because our, demo, dem, our, our dem, demographies are clear that we have more black people than, Correct. Than, than, than whites and so forth and so forth. Yes. So that's what is the balance a deliberate tilt towards a black, a black uh, audience? Yes. <laughs> Yes, because unfortunately, the greater majority of people who are unemployed are black. Yes. The greater majority of graduates who are unemployed are black. The greater majority of the population is black. Is black. But in the workspace, the greater majority of people who are employed and working are white. Mm -hmm. The greater majority of people in management are white. Mm -hmm. The greater majority of people who own businesses are are white. That's it, yeah. That's where the problem is. Because the people who are sitting in the top seats in, in these companies are the ones dictating how mm -hmm. employment should be done, what are the hurdles that need to be jumped by people in order to make it. And these are hurdles for people of our skin color yes, more yes. than anybody else. Let me give you an example. If, uh, a few years ago, in our profession, mm. it used to be when you hire a candidate or when you advertise for a candidate attorney, Part of the things that are listed there is must have own car, Ooh. must have a license. Ooh. So a lot of, of our people no. are not going to qualify. Not at all. If you come from Mahaying, not even Mahaying. Driver's license, the mm. you are already taller is, yeah. you know, there were complaints that now you are literally excluding us yeah. from being within the profession and my profession is predominantly white yeah. and white male to be more specific so imagine being a black female in this profession it is difficult a, white, a black female with no driver's license oh. and a car you like you what's in our clothes oh boy so it had to be amended. The yeah. LPC Act amended that and it's now law that you cannot put in your adverts that a person should be having a uh, driver's Those license things, in Ukuluwe. Yeah. But it still happens. Ah, in, in reality. In reality. So which is why this act is saying, hold up, you have to comply. A. And and is it is it it is it as granular in terms of its detail? So there's compliance. Yeah. Or what are you supposed to do? How yeah. many how many senior managers, for example, are you supposed to have? Does it go to that extent? What they're saying is that here is what we want. Equity. Equity for us is that if you have 50 or more people that uh you know, in management, if there's th four people in management, two of which should be black, you know, and if it's going to be in the normal mm. sphere of things, the employees should be balanced. If there's okay. going to be 25 white, 25 black okay. kind of situation. So it goes to that detail. Yes. Yeah. But, but it says you as King David Studios uh. propose to us as the labor department, how you intend on making sure that this is going to be done. So it's not like an, a person from the labor department is going to come and, and say, this is what you're wrong, supposed wrong, to do. Wrong, 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 wrong. So I have to write my own paper, mm. submit it, mm. and say, this works for me. Yeah, this is how I intend on it. And, and it, they might say yes or no. Mm. Or even even though it's, so there's a possibility of someone with a rather extreme plan, mm. but they say, okay, we can see what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Well, we don't know because it hasn't been done before. Yes. Wow. Yes. But but we keep talking about it as a BEE thing. Mm. You said it has an effect. Where does it have an, an effect on, on BEE? So I think more on 49 employees and, and below. Because we can see what happens to those big yeah, corporates. Yeah, the big corporates. It's pretty clear. Yes. And if we were to be clear about how clear it is, it's similar to how it used to be in the past. Hey, you yeah. had to comply. Hey. You had to have a B certificate. I remember we used to use Empower Dex. Mm. We used to pay lots of money for those guys to come and hang out here mm. for a few days. And then after that, they give us a certificate. Yeah. So now that remains for big corporates. Yeah. Yeah. But then below that. Below that. Below 49, 49 and below. And below. Okay. There's no real directive that says you have to comply. Oh. And our country is made out of small businesses that hire 49 people and, and below. below. So there's not going to be a, a specific, uh, somebody from labor to come and say, are you complying? 
you know yeah. and most of these uh, companies are the ones that go and apply for any bee related for matters tenders grants, for tender. grants and yeah. all of those things it's not the big corporates that always go for this because they really don't need it are we saying that right now if you are black i'm white you have five employees i have i have three mm. or i have 49 yeah note i'm white mm. i'm doing better than you mm. Uh, I go and and apply. We go and apply for a tender to deliver water to Department of Water Affairs. Uh, they want bottled water, and they are likely not to ask much. Is no, that what we're saying? That's now? basically what we are saying. That is basically what we are saying, and that is the part that has got people up in arms, because now it means the competition level is not even. At all, because like you're saying, you have 49 employees, have and three. most likely you have even more experience than me in this in all yeah. of this thing. I can deliver way better than you because I have more employees. I have better resources. Everything of yours is fine. Yeah, you are studying out. I'm studying out. You've been around for two years. I've been around for 15 years. Exactly. So now you don't have to prove anything to anyone. The requirements of your on the tenders are not going to change, of course, that you should be BE compliant. We want this certificate. We want your VAT number. All those things, they're still going to be there. Yeah. But you, as the white employ employer, yeah. can take that uh, um, tender mm. contract on review or on co to court to say that I, to the hey, I don't have to comply to this. So these, I guess it's an important point you're raising when you say the Department of Water will not will not change how they procure. Yeah. Uh, but they should be changing how they procure because the game has changed. It has changed. The playing field has changed. Yes. They don't need m me to prove much anymore mm. as this white owner of a company. Oh. Yeah. And I think that's why the unions are looking to take it to court. It should be more than just unions. It should be. What I don't understand, though, um, is why why it was... Because there were a lot of... Um, obviously, putting an, an act into play is not like it's an overnight kind of situation. Yeah, they don't think about it this morning and tomorrow it's, it's you law. Know, how much of a debate was done in an understanding of what the impact of this would be on the country going forward? We'll get to, yeah. to that. I'm curious to know... What is the good in it, in this new act? Because um, I've had people say, this is good and bad. You even said, this, it's a balancing act. The, what is the good in it? For me, the good part of it mm. is for big corporates. Because remember, most of the complaints that actually, well, the complaints that make it to the news are from big corporates and how they, they are treating mm. their employees mm. and how uh, there's uh, mismanagement and, and mis. Um, but they don't pay people in accordance. Yeah. Remember, there was a discam one, I think, is it yes. last year yes. about payments. So that's the thing. You want to grow so much in a big corporate because you want to get the big bucks. That's it. But now here you are in a big corporate and you are reporting to somebody who is a metric. That actually happened to me. Whoa. My manager had failed her metric and she was white <laughs> and I was an admitted attorney. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So imagine the dynamics yes. of that situation. And when you explain certain things to her, went over her head, Of course, you know, but she's managing me. I see a scenario where, and, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, where big corporates are going to divide themselves into smaller pieces. Yeah. That's the thing. To try to be 49 and below or mm -hmm. 50 and below, so mm. to speak. Mm. So, surely that's likely to happen. And we're going to see a lot of these Discam 1 and Discam 2 or Discam Boxback being a company on its own and Discam Centurion being a company on its own. It's not unlikely. It's not unlikely. And I think that's why even though it is actually law, it is not in effect as yet. So, it's not applicable as okay. yet. It's why, law. Why is that? I, I think because there's no debate. People want to challenge it. Oh, okay. It's not yet law it's law but it's not yet effective it's not how is applicable. that because it's signed into law by it is a president signed. um so, sometimes you can sign 
the mm. act into law, but then it can only be implemented at a certain stage. Okay. Right? So uh, either because there's um, infighting, like what's there's happening right now, and there's inquiries, yeah. but it's been signed, it's, it's, it's the law. So because it already exists, it can be taken to the courts to be challenged. That's it. So that is what is currently happening. So in the event it goes all the way to the constitutional court, which we hope it does, mm. then it can be uh, ordered by the court to say, this section doesn't fall within the democratic space okay. that we're in and this section and that section, we're giving you this much time to amend it and then you can make it law. Mm. Because if it's now in effect and it's already being applicable, now you're also going to be dealing with court cases uh, that are trying to... Uh, you know, deal to, with to, to well, nullify have, it. Yeah, to nullify yes, it yes. because it's now actually operational and now companies are actually doing the yes, things that we are talking they're, about. They're acting on it. They're acting on it. Yeah. So rather hold off. Let's see. Is there is there enough attention though? Because I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. Because even I, when I when I saw it, it's in our group, Yadi Loyara, mm. and I happened to see it and people are like, here's the new Employment Equity Act. I'm like, okay, I'll read it. And then all of a sudden, you know, one, two, three things are coming out. Like, Emman, explain this. Explain that. What, yes. what What is happening? Only then did I really pay a lot of attention to it. But in our in our current media space, it's it's, it's not. It's passing. It's a passing it, by yes. kind of statement. It came at the same time with Tabo Best. That's the thing. <laughs> That's the problem. That's, the That's problem. a far bigger story right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Let Let's go go back to how laws become laws mm. because i think that's a question that needs to be asked you yeah. said there, there were enough opportunities for this not to go through mm. if indeed it's a it's a problem yeah uh, and i use the phrase if indeed it's a problem because like all laws as someone who thinks the robots must not be there yes there must be no one yes <laughs> we must just get a mind. yeah you know so there's always someone who's not happy with the law so yeah. how does a law become a law how do we end up with a law as simple as if you kill someone you're wrong yeah so south african law commission is mm. there to basically monitor the country and what is happening and all of that yes. right and then a bill will then be drafted as a result of whatever needs and complaints and society, all of the society is expressing exactly yeah. this bill um is then presented to the NCOP, National Council of Provinces, right? Mm -hmm. And then it is now debated in parliament by all parties that are represented in parliament. Mm -hmm. So it's a back and forth, back and forth kind of situation. Then they go back and redraft, they go back and amend this, and then it goes back for debate. It's that kind of a long okay. process. Okay. Once there seems to be a, 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 a two-thirds majority... Yes. Uh, agreed upon on the bill then it is sent to the to the national assembly for them to see if they can now ca gazette it because two-thirds have agreed on yes. this bill that okay we're good let us now proceed and see if we can put it into uh, into action it could be lobbying yeah. obviously yes before mm. all of that there could be, I'm trying to think back to the BEE thing that we were talking about mm. earlier, that it could be lobbying that lobbies against a particular direction. So anything is possible where people say, no, you can't. Yeah. There could be bribery. There could be anything. There could be anything, okay. really. All right. There could be anything, okay. really. And then once it gets to the, to the National Assembly, then it is presented to the public. Mm -hmm. It is put out there. As a, as, a, as a bill that people can now comment on. And debate. And debate yeah. and put in your submissions on what you think about it. Free of charge. It's in the post. It's in newspapers. It's, it's on the internet. It's in the internet. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. Right? But unfortunately, it is also hidden, if that makes any sense. Because okay. how often would you wake up and open your phone and, and be, go look no for a bill? <laughs> that is currently being debated. Or get a notification that a bill is out. Oh. You will get a no notification of a Twitter of thing. You will get a notification of your Instagram or WhatsApp or whatever. But you're not going to get a notification. Maybe there is a need for, you for see, a notification of a bill. You know, hell, if you, even your your phone mm. if you have a phone that comes automatically with bo iol or whatever these things that is, says, yeah boom, whatever new, new news bill. thing yes. it says any any news topic yeah. except saying that there's a bill 
that is out. I must give credit though to uh, Parliament, and because I work on radio. Or every day we read live reads eh. that says there is a bill of this kind. Mm. Uh, go and I know that the airtime is bought by by Parliament. Mm. They say go familiarize yourself with it. Uh, the debate is on now, so you can submit your own opinion on yeah. the matter. And the closing date is of it's such a so. such a date. Mm. Yeah, sometimes I tend to feel like they say they 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 say that when the closing date is too soon. Mm. But that's a story for another time. Mm. You know, you find that they're having their own administrative issues. Yeah. The intention was always good. So so our input is crucial. But before it gets to us. The people whom we voted into power, they should be representing us in Therefore debating the these things. Mm. So by the time it gets to us, it's like, yeah, 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 that's I agree. We are happy with this one. Yes. Mm. Mm. Whoa, we are not aware. No, no. We're if not. we are, not a lot of us. Very few, very few. And uh, you must remember that we don't all have access to network data. All of those things. Mm. It is actually unnecessarily expensive to have data. Yeah. And then when you when we do have data, it is for our Other social things. things. Yes. We don't want to deal with the actual crucial things that affect us on a day to day. So now we have a bill that is out. Make your submissions by the fifth of May, and then you do not silence. Oh. So if nobody says anything. Or even if somebody says something, if the majority of people who have submitted are thumbs up, it's a go ahead. So you can then get a group of people who are agreeing with the death penalty. Basically. And yeah. they are actively participant yeah. in the process. Yes. And the rest of us are watching other things. We are watching Spy. Yeah. And, and they are busy working on this 24-7. They are getting... Other people to participate. One ton. And they then finish by saying, Great, mm. it's done. Mm. We wake up one morning and we need 49 people. <laughs> and we didn't know this we was didn't happening. Know. We didn't know. Yo. We didn't know. And it goes back to, I know we're talking law, but it also goes back to the right to vote. Yeah. In your normal, uh, um, what is this? Our 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 year our 2024 is True. coming up. Yes. National elections. elections. Yeah. You know? Why do you bring that up? What do you mean it brings it brings that to mind? It brings that to mind because the more we bring our voice to these new laws that are there, the more of our voice will actually reflect in our laws. Yeah. You know? And as a result, we wouldn't be complaining as much as we are in terms of the unfairness of the act. I mean, is it la two years ago, uh, Julius Malema uh -huh. brought to the fray an act, yeah, like, is it 1960-something? <laughs> you know, it le trespassing particularly. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yes. particularly how it deals with black people. Yeah. It's been in law since then. It's never changed. Nobody has changed it. It's never been contested. Ever. Maybe maybe we haven't had a case related to it in a long, long time, which is also possible. Which is also possible, but from my time when I still worked in legal aid, we have. Oh, a so number of times. Cases like that. Yes. Yeah. But because most of the people back at Ratlan Legal Aid, they don't have money to take this thing further. So if they are found guilty on this... Remind us if you remember more details about yeah. that. What What do you remember about that? So, <laughs> so if you were found to be trespassing, the owner of the property, well, in accordance to that act, could have rights to uh, obviously either get you injured in one form or another. You're okay. on my property, and okay. then it wouldn't be uh, much of a big deal. I can send my dogs. Yes. I can shoot you. Yes. And all of that, which is all good. But just now I was passing through. Mm. It wasn't a matter of I'm attempting to do anything. Because yes. literally trespassing is the intentional um, and lawful, mm. you know, walking through or... It could be, yes. Yes, yes. into somebody's property. Your intention is not malicious. Yes, it yeah. could be. It's could a be shortcut. Your intention, yes, true. Which happens a lot. Yes. Yeah. But then... We have this fence that covers 10 kilometers mm -hmm. and my home is like 500 meters if I were to cut through, Yeah, you know? And then there, as a result, here, we, let me take you to that case, yeah, that kid who was shot in the free state. That's true. Yeah, for what is it for? Is it for a sunflower? Mm. I think it was, you know, stuff like that. Sure. 
and even though the 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 owner of the farm was persecuted for for murder and mm, all of that mm. his justification was trespassing according to this law yes so now the measure would be um in terms of criminal procedure mm. it would be was your protection of your property far ex- exceed what is necessary ah, you know in terms your, of your self action. defense yes. eh, your self defense of your property could you have done it in a different way could you have just said hey bah, you know bye and if the court says ah no there was no other way mm. you, you're happy you may just get off you were justified in acting the way you did yeah have we changed that law uh, yes we have but it's not like people are going to abide <laughs> it was deemed unconstitutional it was it was repealed and all of that it doesn't change the mindset of people at the end of the day let's go back to our participation yes. and you're saying we are we are, is our participation so low that we are likely to sell our country and we're not aware I, I our country so. is likely to be sold and we're not aware yes it is i think it's that bad because we things are happening around us we are consumers of content that is not worthy of our consumption that makes no difference it in our makes lives. no difference at all it doesn't change the weather or, yeah. or or anything what happens in kim kardashian's life doesn't change the livelihood of our people or even ourselves as individuals you know but that's what will be trending Yeah. Do you get what I mean? So those things have no effect mm. if we don't focus our energies to the right, the right, right thing. Yes. On the right things. And I was listening to um it's, it's last week man. Mm. Um se- is it 702? Yeah. I think it's 702. There was a debate on some political situation and I'm like most of us are not aware yeah. of what is happening. You know, and as a result of that, we are focused on Tabo Bess. I'm not saying Tabo Bess is not a, a an, an important case. An interesting case you for know? that matter. But whether or not him and his co-accused are found guilty, it's not going to affect our how, our lives. No. Yeah. You know, but how we choose to focus our energy that is that that is my my main my main concern. You know, oh. so if you don't know what your rights are. you don't know how to use them and you allow anything that comes your way you accept it as what it is yeah. you know today i had a consultation with 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 um, a gentleman and his perception of what the law is mm. was so warped yeah. you know and he was very emotional about what was happening in his life mm. and all of that but he's he doesn't see things right no yeah so when i set things straight that this is what the law says Mm. Let's forget what public perception is. Let's forget what people assume it is or what customary uh, traditions mm. differently say and Ooh. all of that Uh-oh. is. Oh, he's got a marriage issue. Yeah, he got a marriage <laughs> issue. And then his eyes were like, you know, and um that is my problem. We oh. have a lot of uh ridipizang di 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 What's the English word where things are not true? Superstitions. Yeah, either superstitions or or even misconceptions, misconceptions really. yes it's misconceptions of what the law it, is yeah. and if you don't know like i said if you don't know what your rights are you're going to accept what comes your way or yeah. there's nothing i can do have we been in a situation where we have a law that got to become law and so much was wrong with it sure there is there there, there's be. many of them especially in 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 criminal law yeah there's a lot of them uh I, in customary law oof No there's a lot of them like trying to to pick out one it's yes, it's, it's, yes. it's really sad. But there's a lot that There's a lot out there that should not be out there. Yeah. And if nobody really challenges them they're just going to be in existence. And people who know the purpose of those laws will use them against yeah. you. People who know them. Yeah. Who pe- understand them. Yes. They're going to use those laws against you and say, "But how come you don't know this? It is public knowledge. I think it's an act at the end of the it, day. It is. It it's is public it's in the on, public it, domain. It, exactly. How do you not know that there's this kind of situation? So we get ourselves into contracts. Yes. And we don't understand what the laws pertaining to contracts are. Yeah. And if it's a contract in a specific sector, what the laws in that sector are dealing with. Mm-hmm. Because that's another thing. Every single sector law is there. Mm. Everywhere. 
there is law. Yeah. So if you're not acquainted with what it is you're supposed to know in that sector, you find yourself at the back end and in trouble. And that surely that happens a lot. All the time. We were talking earlier about what is that uh, con- common something? Common purpose. <laughs> common purpose. Yes. I want to bring it in here mm. because I feel it's one of those that are, in my opinion, mm. that are wobbly. Mm. What is common purpose? It's criminal law. Yes, it's criminal law. Okay. So loosely put, common mm. purpose is we all come together and we discuss a crime. Okay. We are going to go rob a bank. Yeah. Right? And then even though you did not participate... In the actual crime. In the crime. actual crime. And then you happen to enjoy the proceeds or be found in the area where the proceeds are being dealt with. Yeah. Because you were aware of, of, the what, of the crime, you will be charged under the doctrine of common purpose. I'm going to slice it into pieces. Okay. I did not enjoy the the benefits of the crime. Yes. I, I didn't even know when you went. Mm. I was in the first meeting. I was passing by. When you were having that meeting. Yeah. And I cared. Oh, am I going to do this? Mm. Whatever. Mm. You did. I don't know. Uh, you bought a nice car. I don't even know where you got the money. I mm. just carried on with my life. And then you get arrested. And for some reason, someone says, even David was there. And not at the crime. Mm. But he was, he's, he's aware of it. Mm. Why is it... Why does that have to be a part of my life story? I don't know what you guys did. You were mentioned. And as a result, as, a, as part of the investigations, yeah. the, the SAPS has to now go pick you up and go like, ah, in fact, you're implicated, Munan. Ari. But I know nothing. Well, that's you have to go prove. <laughs> and go prove. You know the term you're innocent until proven guilty. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. You're guilty until proven innocent. innocent. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Our law is very reactionary than pro action, you know. Yeah. Uh, and as a result, once you're detained and you're arrested, the charge that is put to Ntabi Singh and the others is going to be put to you. So now let's say it's robbery with aggravating circumstances. So now because there were guns there. Yes. They're not gonna charge you with you were you were there in the East, meeting. They will charge me with eavesdropping. Yeah, uh, uh, they will charge <laughs> you with robbery with aggravating circumstances. It's not a lower charge. No, you get charged with exactly the same kind of crime. But why? Like, and my why is an innocent, ignorant why? Yeah, you see, so. Why I wasn't there? <sighs> it's only circumstantial evidence, actually. Yes. Right? We know that there was a plan. There was a plot. To mm. do this, we know who the ringleader is. We know that he may not have a specific crew that this ring uh, ringleader works with, mm. but he has people that he can deploy. You know, yes. and if you happen to be once or twice in the same vicinity, we can slot you in there. Somebody has to go for this for this <laughs> thing. The purpose for common purpose, the mm. purpose of common purpose, is to make people who are eavesdropping or who happen to be in the first meeting to go and report the crime before ah. it happens. It puts the responsibility squarely on my shoulders yes. as a as a good citizen of the country Yes, to say, I know there's a crime that's going to happen. Mm. Oh boy. Because how tall it's as if you're okay with it and would you be only okay with it it means there's a likelihood that you're going to gain something from it if you're not going to gain something from it then why didn't you tell the police that is the line of question you should expect is is there a defense to i don't want to be killed by these guys so there's no way i'll say in that <laughs> way i would say you would do be a 204 uh, a state witness become okay. a 204 witness yes. for the state Hurry. but people who protect you know yeah. and all of that but otherwise it's 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 not a defense really <laughs> it is not a defense because you could have done something you could have written an anonymous letter to the police you know they wouldn't really have known that it was you you could have there's a lot of you could have you could have that would come up I did nothing because I just didn't want to get involved that is not uh, that is not taken lightly by by the law. No. Or I just didn't want to get involved. Yeah. You should have. Basically, it says if you were there, 
you should now you are involved you, now you, you are like involved. it or not yes a guy who was walking past a uh, friends of his who were working on a car yeah a stolen car he was just walking past and he sees them hey chance and then he walks into the yard mm. they're working on a car it looks like they're fixing a car mm. to mm. him it's it's nothing and while they're doing that the cops come and they arrest all of them yeah. in, him included yes he had been there for two minutes and because he saw his boys mm. are you saying now he's part of this crime they find you there while a car that was stolen oh. is being stripped uh. I was walking past. You have to prove to the court that you were not there. Where now Raunka I went. was there. But I wasn't involved. But what we are saying is that you now have to prove to the court that you were not involved in the actual stealing of the car. Yes. Uh but here's the thing. Because you were there mm. with part of the people that were there. Another charge that you're facing is a section 36 so it's um kind of section 36 again. Possession of suspected stolen property. I was my hands were you in are my there. pocket. You were there. You were there. My hands working. were in my pocket. You were there. Ay ay ay. You were there. These are the laws we need to review. You know? <laughs> Wait a minute. I can't be charged and I'm charged the same way as everybody else. Exactly. Exactly. And now it's to you to show that on the when let's say it was stolen an hour ago where were you an hour ago mm. you can show proof that you weren't there now the the, the charge of theft is going again away okay. now we're dealing with section 36 possession, possession. so if you can you work from that now you know because i wasn't there when it was stolen which means i wasn't aware that this vehicle it was a stolen, a stolen vehicle. vehicle and therefore i had no intention to be in possession of this vehicle that's possession now aside okay. and then as a result everything else that follows can fall away but now it's your responsibility to prove to that. prove that yeah <laughs> that's why i say this, these bills are problematic yeah cuz cuz and 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 i guess the point of this chat you and i are having is that it proves that these bills pass through our lives before they become law yes and then we don't see them don't see anything is there anything that can be done with and i continue to call it the bee because we all agree that it affects bee mm. is there anything that can still be done take it to court that's the only thing that we can do now yeah. if it was still at a stage of the bill it could have been let's let's go and submit if there was a deadline make an application for them to extend the deadline because yeah. there's not sufficient submissions or there's not sufficient awareness around the bill and we want it to be you know out there so that more submissions could be made and hopefully can sway the the the, the national assembly to change mm. but now that it's actual law it just has to go to court and if you're lucky to find people who are willing to take it straight to the constitutional court apply for direct application to the court yeah. state your reasons why it's an urgent constitutional uh, matter and if they say that you've made your case for that and then the court will look at it and see if it conforms to what our our democratic society ought to be yeah yeah i think there's there's room there there is there really is it's just that it shouldn't have been passed in the first place yes yeah. so there's room for people to get together pro bono lawyers yes <laughs> and it goes to constitutional court yes. it gets discussed there yes. hopefully we'll get level headed uh, 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 judges who will say yeah 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 this this was a mess yeah <laughs> I I can't say be any more. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't know any more. The kinds of decisions that have come out of the con court sometimes hey, they are like uh, We've had we've had landmark ones though. Yeah. We have to acknowledge that yeah. that uh, you know the the big Zuma one was mm. a landmark one that yeah. uh, that uh, even now it's been questioned because uh parliament is making the same decisions about pala pala. Mm. And 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 there's case law now that says uh you know uh, the highest office must account like everybody else yes. so it needs to be looked at as i think we there's enough case law there's enough but somebody has to act on it yeah. cuz if we sit and do nothing then nothing happens exactly yeah mm. there's a need for position eh mm. <laughs> in mm -hmm. moments like this yeah. there's a need for op opposition yeah there is but uh it's such a dirty and scary world yeah, yeah. To be in that 
you know, sphere in that situation that most people tend to just go like, no, it's fine. Let, let us step back. Let it happen. Let it happen. And we'll deal with the backlash, if any, that is going to come. And like I was saying in, in, in the beginning, Baron. Uh. When it comes to knowledge of self, knowledge of rights, knowledge of what you need to do to protect you and your own, yeah. it's, it's very limited, extremely limited. I, I think uh, one of our greatest damages of, of our legacy, the legacy of apartheid is education. Yeah. Uh, we, we deal with a country that has a relatively high literacy rate. Mm. We, we tend to say it's not, but it is, it's mm. a fact. Uh, but even if, it's, even if we can read and write, there's something to be said about the interest to want to know because that's very different. Yeah. Ability to read and write doesn't say you want to know. You want to know. Mm. And even if we know, uh, what do we do with it? There's something else. There's another layer of knowledge mm. that says, I know, but I do nothing. You know, so there's there's a lot of layers and and they all come back from, from uh, when, when you walked in here, your son is reading a book, he's only eight. Mm already reading becomes habit. Yes. And and you can then steer the reading in a particular direction yeah. as a parent. Yeah. Uh, what type of books and so forth and so forth. And and those books will they'll find heroes in those books that do something when something is wrong. Mm. And 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 mm. so in, in essence I'm saying we can fix electricity with the right willpower. We can do it in a week, two weeks if we really wanted to. But we can't do much with with the, our our minds the way they are as grown adults who are in in their elder age mm -hmm. we are already like this mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what you're saying goes back to the another layer that you mean i i want to mention rather kihori you may have knowledge and all of that but as long as it doesn't affect me ah that's the other one so we have that we have that we have the a safe distance from the crime. Yeah. Or a, and also there's the, the I want to be accepted area mm. because we know who controls the economy yeah. and all of that. So if I were to speak up against that, I will lose something. So we find that a lot in the law, yeah. that, that safe distance. Yes. Or a, it has nothing to do with me. Yes. Unless it's a sensational story, the distance is still there. Yeah. However, this is interesting. Yeah. Like what we've been dealing with the past two, three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to that. I don't care much for that case, <laughs> I'll admit. <laughs> There's always a new story. I'm, I'm, I'm more interested about Magudumane. Mm. What is her crime? <sighs> <laughs> her list yes so she is going to be facing the crime of murder because for, for she the... assisted she's an accomplice ah right and we still don't know where this gentleman or Bloomfontein was killed exactly yeah and if he was killed at all if he was killed at all yes so that is if that person was indeed killed by somebody. Somebody in there. this in this little thing. Yeah. yeah. Because then, even if she wasn't present when the killing was done, the body was utilized to, yeah. you know. Yes. So and if she was involved in that, it's she's part of the she's murder. She's part of the murder, right? Okay. And then we're dealing with uh, aiding and abetting. Okay. Right? We're dealing with arson the burning in car in, yes. in the prison yes we're dealing with theft the corpses that allegedly were stolen, stolen. right and we're dealing with mutilating a corpse because remember one was found in the water somewhere and all of those things yeah. we are then dealing with uh um the as uh, the fraud mm. yeah the identity documents of course that were found in yes, her possession in her possession yeah. and then we are dealing with that six so far right this i think there's something i'm missing uh let me see my understanding of the case very limited well the traveling through other countries yes. surely there's a crime there yeah well, depending on on what documentation was used it's, yeah. it's fraud yes is. so it's going to be fraud but those other countries would have to deal with how she got into okay. their countries okay. and all of that is. but for us this side it will be being it's the fraud those, being in yes. possession of the, the illegal uh documentation yeah. um yeah that's what she's she's looking at the stories of of time spent in balito 
uh, on weekends with the Tabo Besta while he was while in he prison. was in custody. Yes. So that is also it will wall, it will fall under the aiding in a bit because you aided yes. to this prisoner to get out. Yes. And then you are bet you kept them with you, you them with in you. Balito or wherever, and then you returned them whenever. That's already a problem, but. Here's my curiosity. Uh-huh. As a person who's been in and out of prison, not arrested, in and out of uh, cells in, in, in various um, yeah, prisons, prisons yeah. to get into a prison. It's a process. It's a process. I've been to one many times as well. So you start to ask yourself, Jorge, um, entrance. Entrance one. Entrance one, <laughs> where you go sign your name and all of that. How mm. now you present your LPC card that you're an attorney. Yeah. What happened there? Yeah. Is that person going to be arrested and be added to mm. this situation? They keep adding new names. Though. You know? Yeah, I've noticed that. And then it's the next gate, the in-between, where you're going to be waiting uh. for the accused to come in and consult with you or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's Gamola, where they're going to bring the accused to come to you for consultation. <laughs> and then there's... You know, this guy and Magutuman together, clearly, because we can even use that as an escape, a visit yes. to a hotel mm. far away from where you are actually detained. detained in Balito. And he was detained in, in Bloemfontein. That's a travel. And we hang out there for a weekend. We can even consider that an escape all on its own. Yes. <laughs> yes. Multiple escapes. Es- essentially. Yes. From wow. prison. The fact that you returned is irrelevant. Yeah. Because it means that the sentence you were given, you've broken it. And in essence, you've committed other crimes. Other crimes, yeah. And now you have to be faced with those charges as well. She's facing a lot. She is facing Are a lot. These, and I ask this question innocently as a South African because we tend to look at things like, is serious, Mary? Mm. <laughs> mm. Are, these, are these charges serious charges? They are. They are very serious. Aiding or in a bed, clearly it's a... Yes. And being an accomplice to anything is a serious charge because you're viewed as if you actually did the act. Even if I stab somebody, I'm the one who's holding the knife, but then you help me take the body and go bury it somewhere. I'm, I'm you, part of the murder. Exactly. That's how serious this situation is. So if the the body that was found uh-huh. there, even if he wasn't... Uh, um, he died of natural causes in a hospital. Yeah. We don't know We that. don't know that. Yes. But let's say for argument's sake that those natural... When the autopsy comes out, those natural causes were by virtue of an overdose of drugs that was given to this person by somebody else. And the chain yes. shows that it ends up with... With me somewhere. A, then you are going to be charged. With murder. With murder. <laughs> she's facing a lot more. she's facing a lot and I think I don't know if they've applied for bail as yet but applying for bail would not be a good idea why do you say that you're not going to get it you already one know. you're a flight risk of course that's the most important thing yeah. you're a flight risk if we let you go now there's no guarantee that we'll find you Kausan, mm. because you've gone to Balito you've gone to Tanzania and all of that with fraudulent documentations paperwork. Yeah. yeah and now the the dead. What do we know? What we know is that he, it seems he was um, knowledgeable about the, the fire. Okay. It seems he knew about the body. He knew about the date of the escape. And he knew about the date of the escape, which yeah. means if you knew about the date of the escape, you knew what the plan was. You, you were part of it. Yeah. Which means you knew that was going to be a body. You may not have known that it was Katleho, but you knew there was going to be a body that's going to be put in the cell yeah. as if it is. You knew that somebody is going to be there to set the fire. Mm. You knew that somebody was going to be there to open the gates to ensure that these people escape. You knew there were uh, fraudulent paperwork that's going to allow these people to escape. That's true. So all of these things as a result of common purpose. You you go back to his knowledge more than yeah. whether he's involved or not. It's yeah. another matter. Yes. But he was aware. He of was it. aware of it. And in some manner or form, we'll find out as the investigations go further. In some manner, he was involved in one. Because from my understanding, he's a former police officer. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yes. My understanding is that he's a former cop. And as a result, he knows people and he... 
you know, from what we hear, the rumors say that there's a five million rand that was done to you uh, used to deal with this whole escaping we, situation. We, we always and and hopefully one day the truth will come out because yes. the stories of monies in South Africa never always come out. Yeah, uh, we don't talk money, runa butai. You get to a guy. I hope one day we'll find out where all this the funding of this for project, all of this came from because it must have been a lot of money. yeah. To yeah. fund an operation of the size. Yes. <laughs> and we all wonder who paid for this? This guy was in jail. And 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 the doctor, she's not a multimillionaire who no. can splash out with five million rents easily no. like that to help a uh, a, a convicted uh, rapist. Do you know what I mean? Like who was funding all of this for what reason? Yeah. I hope that is a case all on its own. Uh, yeah, it has to be because there's no way that these five people so far have are the ones who masterminded this thing and got money for it because they're those who got paid uh, the, the 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 security guards yes. and so forth and so forth yes. and so forth. Wow. Yeah. Now, Tabo, mm. he's already a convicted criminal. Yes, but he's clearly dealing with new charges. Yeah. A so, technically, even though you're a convicted felon with these new charges, you still, per the Criminal Procedure Act, you have a right to apply for bail. It's going to be a futile exercise, okay. but you have a right. Okay. It's every, uh, every accused person's right to, to apply, apply for, for bail. bail. Yeah. Now, uh, it is up to him to forego, give up his right to apply for okay. bail. So, his charges... Uh, are the same as Nandi in and a lot then, of ways in a lot of ways yeah. because they were involved mm -hmm. and then his will also be escaping escaping yeah, yeah. it will be that one as well and then uh, we will see if these Bali trips and all these other escapes are they going to be added there into that yes and then it be multiple counts of escaping and then the murder charge and all of those things and then we'll see what now, sure. how best they're going to to deal with the criminal aspect here do you know, I, I, I look at his, his case uh, as an individual and I, I wonder about his well-being, but it's a story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people say he's a genius. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. A genius doesn't get caught, in my opinion. He continues to stay to be in the run. Correct. For, for, for Forever, long, long most time. times. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he doesn't get... He doesn't escape from Bloemfontein and come live in four ways. No. <laughs> like, no. Nah. They, they go. The Tanzania thing... Could have happened when he first escaped. Yes, the first Bali trip should yes, have been that, it and is. then it's not, over. Not now, yeah. you know. The, f the fact that he was able to leave at some point, he shouldn't have come. He back. shouldn't have come back. Wow. Shouldn't have come back. What a crazy one! It, that one is that one is a very interesting one for for us criminal defense attorneys. You look at it, and yeah, say, like Whoa. you want to see how this is going to end because now we're going to use whatever precedent is going to come out of this case in all our matters going forward. Yeah. Like the Zuma matter you you mentioned, that's it. You know, yeah. so we start using all these principles and things that are coming out of these matters in in any application yeah. um, going forward. He spoke of representing himself. Mm -hmm. At some point, yeah. How is that? Uh, what opportunity in South African law uh, considered? Is it is it something that you can do yeah. easily? Yeah, it's your right. Yeah. So every first appearance for criminal matters, you are given your rights. You have the right to legal representation. Okay. One that you pay for yourself. Or you can get legal aid. Mm. Should this not be an option for you and you choose you want to represent yourself, you are free to do so. Okay. How do you choose? Yeah. And then you make your choice. And 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 I can insist on my own representation. Yes, you can insist on your own representation. Are we likely to see Tabo doing this? Seeing as he wanted to address the magistrate himself. That was another interesting thing. You know, because when you have an attorney. When, because you you have your back against your client, so you, you won't see if they have a hand, Their hand up, up, you know. Yeah. So the court will bring to your attention your client wants to speak to you, and then you approach, mm, and mm. then you address the court what your client wants, right? Uh, the client going over you and saying that I want, want to, to speak. speak yes. As long as there's an attorney in front of the magistrate, and you as the accused have not terminated mandate, the court is going to listen to your attorney. Not you. Yes. Yeah. 
And that the main reason for that is because the attorney knows what it is that the court wants and how to deal with process That's it, in court. Yeah. The assumption is already made that you don't know process. Exactly. Process is taught. Hey. And, hey. and as a result, if now they have to listen to you directly and there's no attorney present, the process is going to be so long because mm. the burden is on the presiding officer to guide you at every step okay this is how we do this this is how we do that this is so, how we so do this so you're still given help yes you're still given help and if the if the magistrate is seen to have not helped you throughout the process ah. that case is reviewable or appealable oh because it may show bias True. on the side of the presiding officer True. Yeah. how is that type of help, the quality of that help, that type of help in South African law. It can't be full on representation wherein the presiding officer is full in. Remember, they still have to remain as objective as, as possible. possible. Yeah. So that's why they avoid so much mm. to get involved in helping accused persons or any, even in civil matters. If you don't know process, the court has to guide you. Okay, you need to do this. You need yeah. to do that. So the courts tend to avoid doing that because once the matter goes on appeal or on, on review, if it sounds like you were helping too much, it's like you were not objective and yes. therefore your ruling is based on whatever feeling or emotion that is deemed you had at that moment. And what is the quality? You said you have a right to be represented by government. Yes. And I use government very generally. A. Uh, what is the quality of legal aid? Legal aid, I'm a product of legal aid. Yeah. I did my articles there and I, after doing my articles, I was there for another three years. Mm. The quality of legal aid for me, it is it is great. Having yeah. said that, in every uh, uh workplace there are people who love what they do and the people who don't yeah and there are those who just really don't care you that know? you can find even with lawyers you pay exactly yeah. so it's not all the time that you're going to find people that are going to go full out mm -hmm. and full on and represent you to the best of their ability that's why about loud they say legal aid attorneys will tell you oh, plead so mm -hmm. in other words plead guilty so this, this is wrapped up quickly. yeah so that we can finish up this and then you get a suspended sentence and go home and then you it doesn't get explained to you the consequence of pleading guilty. Mm. And another thing would be a situation, Yahore, if you get arrested, let's say for possession of Dacha, even though it's deemed possession of drugs, literally possession of okay. drugs, uh, but and then you are found in possession of Dacha, not in your home, like strutting mm. and whatnot. Mm. Um, Kadi selling downstairs and then some, uh, somebody from the NPA specifically says to you, no man, sign an admission of guilt and then pay a hundred bucks with some way high because you're not going to spend the night there and you're going to you go home. You think this is good. You think this is good and it's not because Kausani, when you go and apply for a job at King David, you have, you a, criminal, you have a criminal record yeah. against you. It was in the drugs. It was like 0 0.03 grams of dacha or yes. whatever. It is strictly drugs, you know? Ooh. So. Jeez. Maybe we should all go check if we have criminal, yeah. criminal uh, records. Yeah. Yeah. Because surely we get it, we get surprised in yeah. moments like that. A lot of people actually do get surprised. Uh, totally certain um, Offenses against the National Road Traffic Act. If you put the stop sign, whoa, you know, and then they they make a big deal of it. And then about to hire, but we said this lady, but I man, but the admission of guilt is a lot of my. I've always known that admission admission of guilt is the easiest way to get out of this thing. Yeah, it is the easiest way to get out of it, but it's also the easiest way to get a previous conviction. <laughs> That's the so downside. So we carry of it. we carry these admission of guilt with consequences. With consequences, is there admission of guilt that doesn't have a criminal record? No, all admission of guilt is criminal record. Yes, including drinking and driving. I slept at the cell. I signed something. I gave them money and I walked away. That one is a different situation. Okay. So with drink. Dry, drunken driving, yeah. you cannot sign an admission of guilt because they have to prove how much alcohol was in your blood. Okay. Right? Okay. So, and here's something else. The police don't need your consent to draw your blood. We all think we do need consent. But I have, I, I have to agree. It's my blood. You can't just... Mm -mm. You're going to have to hold me down to the floor. Okay, then they will do that. By law, there is it section section sixty five deals with the drunk driving. Um, kind of in the criminal procedure, I forgot which particular section it is, yeah. but it says that 
the um, officers have a right to take a tissue sample from a person if it is within the interest of justice to do so without that person's consent. So because you are, you've blown into that thing, mm -hmm. that thing remember, is not admissible in court. Okay, right? yes, we know that. So, yeah. But then it gives the officers an idea of, of your level of drunkenness. Exactly. Yeah. And if they feel that letting you continue to drive, it is not in the best interest of justice because you might cause an accident going forward. Then they put you on the side and then say, Blomada, and then we're going to drive with you to the clinic or whatever and have your blood drawn. Mm. If you say no, it's a second charge because you're resisting arrest. <laughs> 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 so don't, don't, don't bother. And also, um, Another thing that when it comes to uh, driving, mm. driving isn't actually the car moving. As long as the key is in the ignition and the engine is on, it's deemed to be driving. So let's say that you just come out of a club somewhere. Yes, you've drunk an alcohol. You haven't moved an inch. I'm, it's still where it was parked. It's still where it was but parked. But I'm inside. And you're inside and the engine is on. You're deemed to be driving under the influence of alcohol. You know, so just just avoid touching a vehicle. <laughs> so yeah, they have the right to draw that from you. But and it can it, it can should and should be drawn by a medical officer. Correct, it can be drawn by by, by a the, police officer. That's why they have to drive with you to the nearest medical center clinic uh, but it, to it's, draw it, the it blood. It seems cumbersome for the for the for the traffic officers and the police to stop you, arrest you, put you in a van drive with you to a police station and at that point, two police officers are off the road. Mm. They are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Or maybe they are because yeah. they're arresting you. Yeah. But it, it, it looks like it to police it mm. in that fashion is quite a job. It is. I think that's why when you're at traffic, what in not, traffic uh, there, th there's a lot of them. So there's still other people staying to continue the remain, job. Yeah. yeah, while they take this person to go and draw blood and then they can take them to the police station to go and sign their rights sheet and all of that. And depending on how drunk you are, yeah. then you may find yourself possibly um, in a cell in a cell for the weekend, and then in the morning you may pay money. That money that's is, the, the, what I was talking about. That money is usually bail. Actually, it's not Whoa. anything. It's it's your bail money, and then they're going to write on the receipt on your rights form that you paid one point five towards bail uh -huh. or whatever the case may be, and you go home. There's sometimes really no need for you to appear in court on Monday or the next day or whatever, uh, because when you go to court, it's going to be postponed for quite some time. Why? Is while that? we are waiting for the blood wow. alcohol uh, report from the lab, and our labs are are challenged, mm -hmm. so we don't move fast enough. No. You can wait anything from nine months to two years. Just but, waiting but, but, for the But outcome. isn't that uh, the phrase that I've heard many times, justice delayed, it's just is justice is denied. Yeah, but it is what it is. This, it, it seems to have been an accepted situation by our courts. So they just provisionally withdraw charges against you. And eventually when the blood alcohol oh, comes no. back, you then receive a subpoena to appear in court so they can re reactivate yes. that that case yes a year after i thought it's gone yeah and suddenly i get a call yes. that the Majabel, we are waiting for you at midran police station is mm. that where you appear in fact this appeal is on straight from court not even from okay. the police station wow. okay so it will have the 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 charge sheet attached to it so you know why it is you're being subpoenaed yeah. and then it will say that um, on this date, you were driving on this road, a national road, and you were you had 0 0.06 milligrams of alcohol in your blood. So by law, truck drivers should have 0 0.02. Okay. And then us normal folk is 0 0.05. Yeah. So they give us leeway. Nyan. Leeway. Nyan. <laughs> Truck drivers are not because they have the King PDP. P, 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 yeah, PDP. Yeah, PDP. Yes. yes. Public, uh, yeah. public driving. Permit, so they, they have is. the public's uh, uh, lives yeah. in, yes, their in their hands. So they have to Bus be extra sober. And taxi yes. drivers and all of those. Yes. Whoa. Mm. I didn't know. There's a lot. There's a lot we don't know about the law. Yes. We should do a whole show, a whole channel. Oh, on just law. Okay, mm. That's the name. That's the name. <laughs> Done. <laughs> okay, yeah. Wow. I, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I'm a little saddened by the BE thing. 
And and that's where most of us who run small business are probably at right now, mm. where we're thinking, oh, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know this is happening. And by the way, it was happening anyway in spite of. Um, I'm also in, in the same boat of you I'm, as you. We yeah. sit on panels as, as of attorneys, all sorts of, yeah. you know, so that you can be able to assist government in all sorts of legal matters. It's usually labor-related matters, employees yes. and employers yeah. and whatnot. But you don't get the work. You're sitting there for three years and you don't get the work. And the panels expire. Yeah. Because sometimes they're just a three-year panel, exactly. five-year panel. Mm. And after that, it's gone. It's gone. And you have to submit again to be on the panel again. Yes. You're discouraged because mm-hmm. what's the point? What's the point? And being on the panel takes a lot of work. Mm. You know, to, to fill in those that, paperwork. It takes a lot of work. And you... And sometimes, here's a call I get, not so often, but I get it, where they say, we notice that you don't submit a request for quotations anymore. Mm. Say, what's the what's point? What's the point? Yes, you know how cumbersome it is mm. to look for for prices of things <laughs> and to work out a costing, and you know for sure you're not going to get it. What's the point? What is the point? Oh, so when you hear that other others with more resources than you their lives have, have gotten a little easier. Yeah. Is that is that the right way to look at it? To say why people's lives are a little easier now yeah. when it comes to the BE thing Basically. because of, of this new law we're dealing with. Yeah, their lives have come a lot more easier. Already as it is, we, they were getting the work from the panel. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, the, the facts are they've had a one up on us for a very a long, long time. time. Yeah. And as a result of having a one up on us, they know where to get what. Mm. They know how quickly to get they have connections yeah. that we are still starting to try and make. Yeah. And we are as a result on the back foot. Mm. And now this act is giving them a little more yeah. Of an advantage on already a ground that is advantageous to them. To them, yeah. And yet when you speak in, you know, the normal rooms out there, when you speak, there's complaints from white people saying that we are not getting work, it's being given to black people, but whom? Yeah. Where are those white black people that are getting work? Like, I want to meet them. Yes. <laughs> are they getting good work? Yeah. Or are they competing uh, for price, because uh, we always compete for price. Mm. Uh, I always say it's a beauty contest, but it's the ugliest, ugliest one that wins mm. because they they look at the lowest price, and the lowest price. I always find it so frustrating. They're looking for a bottle of water. Mm. The bottle of water is five rands at the shops. You all submit. You said five rands fifty because you want to make profit. Mm. Somebody said seven rands. Somebody said nine rands. Mm. So I want to make more profit. And there's someone that said five rands. On the dot. They're happy not to make profits. Mm. They get the work. Government is happy with the project that they, with the job that they got. Or not, because it may be bad quality mm. supply. And nobody won in that picture. Government won because they got the water that they wanted. Mm. And that's where most of us find ourselves. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Gunzi. And And most of the black businesses can't afford to go low. No, you can't. You have to pay... You have so to pay for the paper that you use that you use to submit this document. You have to pay for petrol that you use to drive to drop it off in a tender box. And the reason we have to apply for these tenders letting is because when we go and offer our services to our people, tantary discount, munawadura, why don't you you know, and it's very disheartening because when you think of the amount of work yeah. you put in to make sure that this is proper. So when you go out there. I am proud to say I drafted this. That's true. You know? And then somebody says, Oh, Mara. I'm paid this to do that. That's so disheartening. Uh, if you have any comments to say about the BEE thing that we spoke about, or go check it out. And maybe you'll read it and understand it differently. Yes. Like the Bible. <laughs> we all have our own interpretations. Yeah. The law doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So go check it out. Thank you again, Mac. Thank you. It's always, always a pleasure to, to have you here. We'll start that channel called Ukai <laughs> Malau and, <laughs> and, and break down the law because we're lazy to read. Yeah. But we're likely to watch a video. Right. 
And I'm a reader, so it's fine. Bring it you on. You read and I will watch give you the, the video. Info. Yes. <laughs> Where do people get hold of you? Uh, you can send us an email, info at dubazana10.co.za. We have our website, uh, dubazana10.co.za. Uh, we have a landline. Yay. Uh, <laughs> took me a while. I feel bad for the person that has to answer it, but go Ish. ahead. <laughs> our, our landline is 0872658010. Okay. And you speak to a wonderful lady called Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where we are. Does this platform make a difference to you? It does. It really does. The first first one we did was customary, customary marriages. Marriage, yeah. My firm seems to now, that's all we deal with. What? Divorces are coming out of our ears no way. on customary divorces and 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 the misconception setting people come in thinking that ah it's just an engagement and you show them proof in terms of the what law. the law says yes your custom says this but the law says that you know and so that's still a debate it's still a debate till this day and then i think we did <laughs> the one year labor we did and yes, as yes, a result yes, yes. i had to go and and um I, I i i'm good in labor but then i had to now purchase uh, a whole like there's like eight books yeah. that I had to purchase because now I was dealing with specific so kind of... So you're getting of, people calling in yes. saying, I have this problem. Yeah, and then you, it's something you haven't dealt with before. So And the internet is never a good place no, no, to no, find no, the no. law. So I got the books. Now I have to go page through and make sure Jorge, I know what it is wow. and all of that. So it has been quite an amazing journey. Wow. Well, hey, because we, we do this. For other reasons. Yes. Because I do this to, one, to educate myself. Yeah. <laughs> and two, to educate South Africans. Because mm. I realize that we talk a lot, but we don't talk a lot of important things. That is 100%. I, I sometimes wonder and worry when videos that are done to educate don't do as well. Yeah. How true, Jenna, there's a lady that sent me a message today. Yeah, today. Are, uh, last year you did a woman's seminar, right? Mm. Kiria. Mm. Are you doing it again this year? I haven't thought about it. Yes. You know, yes. why? No, last year I couldn't make it. But this year I need to because every time I hear you here and I hear you there, there yeah. and I'm like, no, man, we need somebody who's going to sit down with us as as Batrababo and, 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 and arm and, and, us yeah, with, with information, you know? Yeah. So, you know, even though it was made for the for Women's women, Day, but, but it's, a, it's a general thing. Oh, like no. a lot of our people, if, if I could find a way to do it, at least twice a year, give a seminar where people are just there for knowledge. Yeah. This is what we would like for you to talk about. Spend two, three hours with these people. Yeah. And then or the whole day. Talk, or the whole lunch day. And come back again. I would do it. But it's small business. So, it's you know, easy. we're not there yet. South Africans don't know the law. Mm. Uh, those that do are lawyers. Yeah. Uh, or criminals. Oh, I've, criminals. I've learned. Yes. Uh, criminals know the law very well, actually. Mm. <laughs> and, and most of us, ordinary everyday people, we know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and we, as long as it doesn't bother me, that's the thing. And, I, until, I until, until they come knocking at your door. That's the thing. And you say, how can't, was that a crime? Yeah. <laughs> I was actually thinking of doing one on the Firearms Control Act because a lot of people are looking into getting um, firearms for protection yeah. to educate people who are now. What are the implications in terms of the Firearms Control Act? If you get a gun, what, what are, can you do? What can't you do? Putting it away, yeah. throwing a gun. All uh, those pointing things. a gun. Exactly. Let's talk about pointing a gun for one second. <laughs> what is that? It's also it's a crime. Unless you are in imminent danger, you have to prove to the court that you in That I was danger. in I the one, the holder of the gun. Yes. I was in danger. Yes. If that is your gun also, that's another that's another debate on oh its own. Boy, if it's not my gun. If it's not your gun, you're going to be charged with possession of illegal firearm because it's not yours. Illegal fire ammunition of the bullets that are in there. And then whatever crimes are registered to that gun because it was found in your possession. Ah, la, la. They are my crimes. They are your crimes. <laughs> Won't I be charged with attempted murder? It can be, but it's, it's just pointing of a firearm. That's yes. the charge. Keep pointing of a firearm. Oh, that's a charge on Yeah, it's its a own. charge on its own. Yarr. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. We need a show. Okay. We'll <laughs> talk about it. But South Africans must watch it. <laughs> South Africans must watch it. That's my biggest... That drama. There's a new one. I saw something. Yeah. And I don't watch TV. I, I, I must admit, I, I because... I'm one of them. I'm not isolated from South African society. 
I, I tend to understand. I don't want to understand because we, we are 300 years behind. Mm. Uh, that means we need to run faster mm. to catch up. But when you when you're confronted with so much, so many problems in your life, all in one go, the last thing you want is another lecture. Hey. You want to switch off mm. and go do nothing, and be brainless, and be numb, and just sit, and let life pass while you're sitting on the couch. And tomorrow you face another difficult day mm. because your kids are troubled, you're troubled, your marriage is troubled, your relationships are troubled, you're broke, and you have a job, your boss hates you, you hate your boss, you hate your job, and you have to face that environment again. Tawa Besta is entertainment to it's, you. Yeah. Moja, we are Chola Nine is entertainment. Mm. You, you always, always need to escape. And that's part of the jobs we do when I'm on radio, mm. is to help you escape, run away. From your reality. And how uh, um my job, I always say Diloyara, we need counseling. Today the gent I was telling mm. you about, he broke down and everything. Wow. Every time seeing a, a man cry, it's a lot. And you know, because the situation is dire. Yes. And when this past two weeks. Yeah. I've had men coming to consult for various things. How about someone go fella? They're like, I feel so much better. You made me better. What they don't realize is that because you feel better, you, you've handed you've it to me. You've left that stuff here. And when we don't have a break or a, a pull away and you keep working it and you keep grinding. messes with your head. There's something uh, Vusi Tembakwayo once said uh, in some interview, I guess, even, I yeah. think. And then he says that... Uh, Black people go after black people. Yeah. So if you are working hard to ensure that there's jobs, there's this, there's that, and people are aware of certain things, instead of getting that info, sucking that info from you and acknowledging Tutsu Dieta, mm. they will find anything to ensure that they tear you down. That's yeah. why if you look at the videos about Tobabas who are trying to make a difference in one manner or another, the dissenting comments oh yeah trust me we get that all the time you know <laughs> and for most people it's enough for them to stop yeah no yeah. we get that all the time so it's yeah. it's tough it's just i don't know i have a standard response yeah i say we'll do better next time and you I see leave, and I move. what else can what I else say? can you say yeah because it's free service uh but yet they feel they deserve more yeah mm. <laughs> you move on. You move on. <laughs> we are moaning. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> <That's weird. laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Interview sent to Bazana. Make sure you support her business. Eh? We are small business. You have no idea. We walk around limping. Sometimes yeah. we look better than when we really do, than reality, but we are always limping. It's yeah. always tricky. Yeah. So thank you again. Man. Thank you, Ndeko. And I hope you enjoyed that. It wasn't long. It was meant to be an hour. It's an hour, 26 minutes. It's because of the guns and Tower Best. <laughs> <laughs> King, King David Studio Podcast.